Salam Aleikum, buenos dias. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, making a short video this morning because I have had quite a few people email me asking me, um, hey, listen, um, if, you know, I'm, I'm not scratched, I'm not um, initiated, um, but what can I do to pay homage or reverence to, to my ancestors? And and I at first I didn't put too much, you know, I had it in the back of my mind and then you know I had a couple of more that came out, a couple of more, and I said, Well, let me make a short video. And I'm gonna explain to you something real quick. Um paying homage to your ancestors does not require you to be initiated into into any uh Afro Cuban uh tradition or any tradition at all. I mean, if you understand that you have ancestry and you understand that um, your ancestry is part of who you are, you understand? Because you descend from that line, you know, that bloodline, that DNA, you know, um, you could always, always talk talk like if you had them in front of you you understand like you know you're in your house and 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 you either sitting down or standing up in a room or whatever and you start talking to them and naming if you know names of you know mom dad grandpa grandfather great great granddad great great grandmom um if you don't know the names you know uh further than that you know you still you still call upon them as far as you know, you know, um, you know, like as far as I'm, I'm, you know, I ask you guys, I ask, you know, such and such, they say, I ask my ancestors to protect me, to guide me, to help me, to walk with me, um, and help me uh, uh, accomplish certain things um, on that nature. Um, you know, you could always talk like if you're having a conversation with a regular person face to face. You know, um, some people might seem seem it odd, but the only thing that you don't see from a spirit is, and not all the time, because sometimes you do, is the body, the form, you understand? But that doesn't mean that that spirituality could not be there. That spirituality could not be surrounded around you. That spirituality cannot be... Uh, protecting you or or close to you you know <clears throat> sometimes we let's let's say like this sometimes okay let's say you're driving one day right and you're gonna go do a certain task but something tells you don't turn through that street you always turn through that street but this time they told you don't turn through that street. And you don't turn. You might hear in the news that there was an accident. And that's true. And you say, oh wow, I was going to go down that street and something told me to make a right. Could not that be one of your ancestors guarding you, preventing you from getting into an accident? That's what I mean. So you can always talk to your ancestors um, and ho and hope that they're either in in some type of peace or that they are at least uh, around you. And if there's anything that you could do to help them um, uh, uh, in this spirit in the spiritual sense in the spiritual realm, then you would do. And um, then they would say. Um, as far as doing things for your ancestors, I will call upon them, like I said. Um, uh, sometimes I do it. Um, I would uh, get a, a, a white candle, seven day candle. I would clean the candle real good, you know, make sure there's no negativity on the candle itself, on the glass. And um, I would call upon my ancestors 
and dedicate and tell them this candle, I'm dedicating it to you. Um, uh, and I will light the candle and I will dedicate that light, that candle, that energy, that source of, of that power that emits from that uh, flame to them. Um, sometimes I would get a, a, a buy incense and I would dedicate some incense to them, you know? Um, and I will light it and give it, and, and, and you know, I'm lighting this incense in dedication to you, you know, and I will light the incense, you know? People will say, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with Palo. I'm not talking about Palo. If you think it doesn't have anything to do with Palo, it's fine. I'm talking about, about as, as far as spiritually, you know, we say espiritualmente, in a spiritual sense, you could light up an incense, you could light up a candle, you could you could uh, 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 buy a bouquet of flowers, you know, and put it in, in a vase or something. Put it on a table. If you have a picture of that ancestor that you're trying to reverence or whatever and pay homage to, you could put a picture. You could put the flowers and you could light a seven day candle to that loved one, to that ancestor. If you don't have a picture, you could just put the flowers and the candle, <clears throat> dedicating it to them. And you could say whatever prayer you want to say. If you want to say the Our Father, you could say the Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses that we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. You could say those prayers, you understand, because your ancestors that lived here most likely were Christian, you know? I'm not saying all, but most of them are Christian. So they will understand a prayer like that or have heard a prayer like that. You understand? It's it's not something that I do all the time, but my mom was Catholic. You understand? And my mom also was, it, she was, uh, she had some, uh, I don't know exactly what types of, uh, of things she had received in Ocha. Uh, I know she was the daughter of Ochun because she was always reverencing Ochun. So I know my mom would say those prayers. So I would say a prayer like that, you know, and speak to her, you know, mom, you know, and show love and respect. And, you know, uh, I'm giving you this, you know, and, and I would explain myself, like if she was here in front of me, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with that. I mean, call it, call it whatever you want to call it, but you're trying to, show some respect and, and, and you're trying to uh, keep that remembrance on them. See, that's what happens here with us. We are, we go to a funeral because a loved one dies. Uh, one month later, it's kind of like everybody forgot about them. You understand? And they haven't forgotten about you, but you have forgotten about them. So by you forgetting about them, that's what makes them dead because you forgot about them. It's not because their body is in a cemetery. It's because you have forgotten about that loved one, that ancestor. So in all true reality, you are the one that's making that person not alive, dead in a sense, because your thoughts are no more there for them. And I understand everybody has a, a life to live and everything. But we cannot forget about our ancestors. We can't forget about them. We have to always have them in our mind, have them in, in, in our spirit, in our heart, have them with us all the time. And we could call upon them whenever we want. And, we, you know, for help, for guidance, you know, for tranquility, you know, for sight. You know, it doesn't have to do, you don't have to be initiated into doing things, you know, like, let me tell you something. Sometimes I cook or my wife cooks. And if I knew that, that, that what she cooked was something that my mom, my grandma, or my grand or somebody that I knew that liked that type of food, I would take a spoon of this, a spoon of that, boom, and I would dedicate it to them and put it on the table. 
leave it there for a couple hours, and then I take it and I throw it out. It's not that they're going to eat the food. It's the remembrance of what they liked, that they see, they could smell, they could feel the energy from it, absorb the energy from it. You understand? That's what's important. So don't get stuck in, I'm not a santero, I'm not a spiritist, I'm not a palero, I'm not, no, no. Don't get stuck in that. If you feel as though you want to reverence your ancestors, do what comes to your heart to reverence them, to acknowledge them, to let them know that you're here, that you know that they also are here with you, especially if you feel anything. Like if you feel a, a nice sense of a presence, you know, that feels calm, it's not something like that you feel like it's negative, like it's negative, then you know that you have something that's with you, you know? And, you know, I can only talk about myself. I am uh, a child of four. I have three sisters and myself. I was the only boy my mom had. My mom loved all my sisters like she loved me. But for some reason, because I was her only boy, she felt a little more, I don't know, some type of connection or something towards me. She didn't treat us no different, but she will always say, you know, you're my only son, you know, you're my only boy. And I didn't understand it in the beginning when I was younger, but when I got older, I understood because I'm not saying that daughters don't love their moms. But when a mom has a son, or a son has a mom, the son loves his mother to death. I mean, it's something, it's something that you could you could barely even speak about how much love you have for your mother as a as a boy. You know, and then when your mom is not around, you know, you lose a chunk of yourself. You know, it, it feels like you do. <clears throat> My mom died at the age of 52 due to cancer. Um, very young, beautiful lady, very, very, uh, uh, educated, uh, spoke both languages, English and Spanish, you know, born in New York and Manhattan. Um, you know, she lived a hard life also, but, uh, she always kept being my mom and, uh, got along with everybody. You know, we lived in the Bronx. That's a multi, multicultural place. So, you know, I lived around, uh, uh, uh brown people and, and Latinos practically all my life, even here in Philly, you know, that's who I lived around with and grew up with. Um, so, you know, just do whatever you want to do and all what you feel what comes to the heart. If you want to put a fruit, dedicate a fruit. If you want to put a, 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 a plate of some food, dedicate a plate of some food. If you want to put flowers, you like that, you know that that person likes roses, like uh, sunflowers, like white flowers, put it to them, dedicate it to them. You want to light them a candle, put it to them, light them a candle. Whenever, whatever comes from you, do it. And all that does is makes you feel better and it gives that essence, that spirit, that acknowledgement that you acknowledge them and that you haven't forgot about them. I hope that I made a little bit of sense. You know, uh, like I said, you don't have to be initiated into anything to give your ancestors some reverence and pay homage to them. You know, it's about knowing and remembering them what counts, not forgetting them, keeping them alive because through you, you're keeping them alive, okay? Have a great day. Be safe, guys. I hope that um, I gave you a little bit, you know, that you could kind of understand. Like, it's not. It, it's a lot of things that you could do, but the most simplest forms of doing something for your ancestors is this. And other than that, if you go to the pantheon, to the cemetery, whatever, you know, Go over there also, you know, visit them, clean their plot out, you know, if you can't put flowers uh, because they die quick, then at least get some fake ones and, you know, it's not what you put, is you, it's you being there, 
what counts. It's not much the flowers that you put at the plot. It's you. They're looking at you. The intention that you are there. That's what they're looking at. Be safe, guys. <laughs>